Welcome one another couples to another one another marriage podcast. This is Dr. David and Teresa Mabry, and we are so glad that you've joined us for this podcast, which is meant to strengthen marriages so that they can have greater fulfillment and impact on the world around them. So that's why we're here. Right? Right. Hi, All Teresa. Right. Hi, David. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. Great. How are you? Great. So today we are bringing you an episode about FUI. And FUI, FUI. is F-O-O-I-E, which means Family of Origin Impacts Everything. That acronym is not one that David and I made up or are responsible for. Um, so please do not give credit to us. But FUI, we are going to be just giving you some of our insights um, from our own families of origin, from our own marriage, and how we've seen those families, family of origins impacted in our marriage, as well as just with all of the couples that we've spoken to or coached or, um, or discussed this with over the years, um, some just insight um, and maybe revelations for some of you. I don't know. Yeah. And so, so hang tight even to the yeah. very end because we'll have some practical suggestions, right? Right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. But we're touching base here just to start off like we do every podcast. We want to touch base with one another like every healthy couple should do. And that is on in significant and clear ways and deeper level and everything. For us, our touching base must include a shout out to a wonderful group of people that we were able to spend time with last week. They they are a group of pastors and spouses that uh, Teresa and I spoke at their their conference, their annual mm -hmm. conference right. in Colorado, beautiful Colorado. And so a shout out to, um, and the full name is Mid-America Yearly Meeting Pastors <laughs> and of the Evangelical Friends Church. And show, so that is a mouthful. Uh, that is a mouthful. It is. <laughs> Teresa and I love uh, ministry couples. Yes. We just love, because these are folks that are sacrificing so much to help others and mm -hmm. to pour into others. And that's not an easy thing to do. Right. And, you mm -hmm. know, we talked about um, even what's called compassion fatigue and mm -hmm. some, um, so what it means to even burn out in helping others. Mm -hmm. And this is, for that matter, we know that we have couples that are ministry couples that are listening, social work couples, mm -hmm. first responders, right. uh, those in the medical field that are couples. So many of those across board, we know that pastoral couples, ministry couples have a kind of a special place in our heart, but also we would be remiss if we didn't mention and shout out to the many couples that are listening to us. You're in a helping industry and it's easy to get burnt out and give, and it affects your your marriage relationship so absolutely well you yes it does affect it and too many may not put up the healthy boundaries in place which then in turn affects the marriage and family mm -hmm. even to a greater extent mm -hmm. right yeah yeah so but yeah we had a wonderful time oh, um beautiful being Colorado. with these people yes and then and then we tacked on just a couple of days yeah. on the front and the back yeah. to just yeah. hang out in Colorado because it's been years since I've been there mm -hmm. you were mm -hmm. there more recently that's right in the last few years with our son Alex but mm -hmm. yeah what a great time and one of our one of my favorite places in the world it, and I and maybe it's an out west thing but Colorado is kind of the state <laughs> that I that is my out west you have always dream. had this like fixation with Colorado no I love <laughs> I love, hey folks, Colorado folks, we love your state mm -hmm. um, and love the mountains and... Yeah, the scenery is just beautiful. Yeah, and so it's gorgeous. I love to, to be outdoors and hiking and, and backpacking and whatnot. So uh, shout out to our uh, pastor friends uh, that we made this last week. Um, hopefully you are joining us uh, this week on the podcast uh, by listening in and then... Shout out to Colorado for heaven's sakes. And so those are a few of my favorite things. Okay. Thank you, Julie Andrews from The Sound <laughs> of Music. <laughs> when the dog bites, <laughs> when the bees sting. Is that how it goes? Yeah. I, Keep going. No. <laughs> I, I could probably do that. Because speaking of family of origin, Ooh. we would watch that movie, Sound yeah. of Music, growing up every well, 
year. Well, dude, it was like, I mean, for kids who grew up in the 70s, you and I, right? I mean, <laughs> this this movie was on TV. There were just a few movies mm-hmm. that came on every year, right? Yep. Wizard of Oz was mm-hmm. one of those. The Sound of Music was another one. Yep. And I don't know of many families that at least friends that I had that I grew up around, I don't know of many families who had not taken time to at least watch th- that every right? year. But that's and all it, it, but it, that's all you ever got to see it. Hello y- yeah. folks, no DVDs, no VHS tapes, Three channels. no like that was it. So Three so when it was on on the antenna. It was on. And hey, I didn't mind it because I did like it plus it ran from like eight o'clock to 11 mm-hmm. so you got to stay mm-hmm. up late you know <laughs> to watch it as well anyway oh my goodness well, that is a family of origin in, that is a family of it, origin that's, that's a memory from yeah. family of origin and a tradition i guarantee which that'll play in here soon. i guarantee there are people listening to this podcast that are shouting right now going yes our family also watched the sound of music and or the wizard of oz and um, also honey there are folks listening right now that are like I've heard of that. Heard <laughs> I, my parents watched that. This is my, true. Like, this is like, true. Wizard of Oz, I'm aware of it, but Sound of Music, yeah, I was, right. I think I know what that is. But yeah, my this mom really liked it. My right. dad watched that. Yeah. So shout like, out to our <laughs> young one another couples out there. We love you. That is we funny. love you. And we want you to go, um, I guess, r- that is rent or get a hold of Sound of Music or whatever. But Are you kidding? S- Run it. Good Lord. Just <sighs> pull up whatever streaming device you use nowadays <laughs> and right. like you'll find it. It's going to be there. Uh, that's right. Good that's Lord. Right. Everything is at the fingertips these days. That's right. Lazy, okay. lazy, lazy. lazy. La- <laughs> are you are you calling our one another couples lazy or so we no, I'm calling, as a culture? I'm calling just the whole culture. Boom. Boom, you there we go. dropped the mic. All right, we got to move on. Calling. That's Teresa's not your puzzle, though, and it's oh, your turn to I, do a puzzle. It is my turn to do a puzzle. By the I've way, got the, a good one. By the way, the bag is still hanging in the tree outside of our <laughs> our house here in the neighbor's yard. Just it is, but listen. We're going to keep a bag report going on. <laughs> listen, I, I was going to go one direction with a puzzle, but then as we're sitting here, I'm like, you know what? No, I have another puzzle. Uh-oh. Okay, so David and I, a year ago we decided that we would begin donating blood. Oh. Okay? Yes. And so we go in on a regular basis now to Mm -hmm. donate blood, right? Mm -hmm. And you know how when you donate blood, sometimes they talk about how you could pass out, right? Mm -hmm. You could get lightheaded, whatever. Well, today... I went in first, right? And you were still waiting in the outside room. (laughs) And then you came in and this guy was laying flat on the thing and they had like a cool compress on his head and then my guy that's setting me up to Mm -hmm. get my arm all ready and get my vein you know blood pressure cuff on all this stuff you know like you know squeeze the squeezy thing and pump it up and he's asking this man he's like hey you doing okay how you doing hey we're gonna sit you up now for a little bit and then the guy got nauseous and so they had to lay him back down and then then I go ahead and get you know, my needle going, right? And and I'm pumping. But then this guy, what we find out, then David's getting brought in to like the extra room, right? And I'm mm-hmm. looking at you kind of like, yeah, don't watch this guy. Because I literally thought this man, because my, my, uh, my <laughs> Red Cross worker had said like, you know, if you get nauseous or if you feel like you're going to like throw up, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm just trying to imagine what would it be like, like, Part of me was I usually don't get sick when other people get sick. But if you're mm-hmm. sitting there donating blood and all of a sudden the the person, right? I mean, I could not look away. He was, you know, right there. He in was front right of me. in front of you. He, he was. was literally laying at your feet. He was. He was like right there. And I'm like, what if this guy like throws up? Is that going to make me get sick? You know, I'm thinking through all this stuff. But yeah. anyway, here's my here's my puzzle. This whole thing. Right. <laughs> we find out. We find out from the the key leader of the of the mm-hmm. team that was there. She comes back through, right, and she says, "Guys, we're gonna have to like call the ambulance." And she because this man had been there for an hour. He oh, had wow. he had yeah. finished donating an hour ago, and he was still feeling the lightheaded, nauseous. So then they start taking his blood pressure. They start taking his heart rate, and the whole time, my uh, my pump is just going right. I'm yeah. giving blood, and my yeah. guys oscillating between me and that so Mm -hmm. so they go ahead and call right 
Mm -hmm. I'm done. You're getting on now. And they call ambulance. Fire department also shows up. We have like eight men <laughs> enter the building. Okay. Eight guys for the one eight guys for the body one. that's lying there. But it was amazing. So I had watched this man for 20 to 25 minutes, pale white. Mm-hmm. I mean, his blood pressure was so low. All this stuff. As soon as they said, Sir, we're going to have to follow through and call the ambulance. You are too low. It was almost, he started to perk up. Right. I mean, he started to move his arms a little bit. He started mm-hmm. to do this. And do, then do you know what? Right. I mean, well, you saw it. Our listeners didn't see it. But I'm out there eating my Cheez-Its. Right. Yeah. Having a good time, drinking an apple juice, everything. Minding your own business. Minding my own business. They come back through. Is he on the stretcher being taken out? No, he's not. <laughs> what the heck happened? He, what it happened? Was a, it was miraculous. Well, OK. Now, it wasn't that miraculous. But all of a sudden, though, he... He pulls it together. That's all he I needed. don't know. And then they walk out with him. And yeah. I looked at you and I said, are you kidding me? Is mm-hmm. this guy going to drive home? How do they well, even know that yeah. he'll be able to get there? I mean, he was not doing well. Well, I'll tell you, when I looked out from my little room that they had me in as they were doing the questions and whatnot. Yeah. And I looked out and I just saw his arms. <laughs> they were white. They were porcelain. <laughs> They were so white. They were porcelain, the poor guy. Yeah. And so I did feel for him. I thought, and but you know what else crossed my mind? I thought, no judgment zone here because that could be me. Right? I know. I thought that like, too. Like I could be like, and, right. and every, and I, I, we usually don't have a problem. I don't have a problem giving blood. I don't get lightheaded. Right. I don't get, it's, it's it, but yeah, it's thus, uh, it if it were not for the grace of God. I know. Therefore, I go right, and so it's it like it did strike my brain too because I thought, what would be the odds, right, that today might be the day that mm-hmm. I mean, I've never had any type of lightheaded or faint, and I've had, I've watched, you know, well, yeah. needles can go yeah, in, I'm yeah. fine, You've blah blah blah, right. So, and I thought too, I thought. What would happen, right, if all of a sudden I just pass out, too? It's like, oh, my gosh, are they going to have enough staff in here to handle all this? And then how would that be with you? But I, yeah. so, okay, you got to be in there when the paramedics and the firefighters were in there. And I'm assuming mm-hmm. that they sat him up more and they probably, like, got him going. or he eventually he, stood. Eventually, and then he stood or whatever. But these, I watched these mm-hmm. workers twice in this 20 to 25 minutes, raise him. And every Mm -hmm. time they would try to raise his bed Mm -hmm. instantaneously, he was getting nauseous and they'd lay him back down. And I'm like, okay, it was such a puzzle. How do you call, how do you call the ambulance for this man who literally was pale white Mm -hmm. the entire time? And then he, he ends up walking out on his own and they did not do anything else different to him. Well, here, here's the deal. He dude was not faking it. Well, I'm not real. saying he was faking it. Because he that, was just for so real. we're clear yeah. with with our peeps out there. He was not faking it because his blood pressure. I've never heard of blood pressure. Yeah, being it was this low. low. It was without, like seventy over thirty. I mean, it was low. A dead body has yeah. lower blood and pressure, and his pulse was really low. <laughs> yeah, and so he was he was hurting the poor yeah. guy, and so he. But uh, what happens in your brain? That's the that's kind of like the puzzle too. What happens in your brain? I mean, if I if that were me, and they're mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, ma'am, we're going to have to call the ambulance," mm-hmm. I don't want to go in an ambulance, right? No, because that, that is like, a wake up call. It was right? an amazing wake up call. All you of know a sudden, it's like the brain starts firing, and it. Yeah. You know what I think? I would think, I would think if they were like, uh, David Mabry, we have to call the ambulance. And I'm sitting there like nauseous and everything. I would be like, okay, you're going to get up because how much is this ambulance going to cost? And that's probably what went through that guy's I, mind, right? A very real question. I I think I start going through my deductible. I was what is, too. What is my, honestly, what's my deductible? I know. And I truly think that that's what, that's what, the catalyst was was when he found that out it was like that Mm -hmm. he started firing now i do hope that somebody followed the man home and maybe they did maybe he didn't live too far away Mm -hmm. and they could just follow him home because i would have hate hated to find out like that he passed out in his car you know i mean like that would be awful so anyway good lord there's your puzzle that's a puzzle you just heard teresa just kind of go on a little bit of a rant there and just like (laughs) whoo 
this is what I live with, my friends. I These know. are the puzzles that, that I receive I from my wife, which is absolutely fine. That's the idea. <laughs> oh is that I, I, You all have received what I typically <laughs> get, and that is inside the brain of <laughs> Teresa Mabry, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. And so, and much like no, no my radio, brain. no soft radio voice going on with that story. <laughs> that was all in. That, that was, was all in. Teresa that was, was all. Teresa. Okay. Teresa all right. was all in. Okay. So puzzles here's over. Puzzles over. So oh, here's a question to start our topic yep, off, let's and go. Uh, for family of origin, and we did a great job going family of origin because of talking about. Uh, when the dog bites, when the bee stings. When I'm feeling sad. Thank you, Teresa Mabry. And, but what do you, re- there's a question I have for you, and then maybe I'll circle back as well. Mm-hmm. What do you remember about the marriage of your parents? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, so my parents, my parents had a good marriage. I do remember that. Yeah. My parents were married about, was it 32 years? 1964. Yeah, 32 years. Yep, yep. And then my dad passed away. Yep. Um, my mom is still alive. Mm-hmm. So. Which we'll tell that story of your dad's passing one day on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. A, um, because so that was that was impactful. Yeah. Uh, but, but your parents' but marriage. So in that 32 years, I feel like. I watched a very good marriage, mm-hmm. very connected marriage, very loving marriage. Um, you and I, I, I was, you know, once I went to college, I was out of the house a little bit more. I was home for summers and stuff. And then you and I got married at the end of, you know, af- a year after I graduated, I guess, or whatever. So, mm-hmm. you know, those last few years, I was watching them from that kind of young adult perspective mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, but I feel like um, they had fun together. Mm-hmm. They could laugh together. They were they connected on so many different levels. A lot of compatibility. A lot of compatibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of compatibility. However, they both were still independent. Yeah. You know, they both still had things that they did on their own or what they were involved with on their own. But they supported each other in those endeavors Mm -hmm. never felt like I I never had the type of parents that kind of like somebody sat at home waiting on the other one to come Mm -hmm. you know what I mean type of thing um but and and I feel like our family I mean you know Eric and I my brother uh Eric and I we we knew that we were loved Mm -hmm. and and they poured into us as parents Mm -hmm. um as well and and we really did have a strong uh, nucleus. Yeah, and and it's just of note um, f- for folks here, like many parents, especially of that generation, they they um, they lived in Ohio. You were raised in up in Ohio, but yeah. your parents grew up near one another in Kentucky. Yes, and so it's they transplanted were, to Ohio the, for transplanted. jobs. So they were from the same mm-hmm. area. Yeah, and so they had a lot of the same. Uh, background, family backgrounds, very they had similar. The same roots. Same roots. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And so they didn't know each other though until college age. Yeah, they met. So it's not like they college. grew up together. They met in college, mm-hmm. and then they transplanted to Ohio for jobs, because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. that's where the jobs were. And so that so. really shaped to your household is because there was a lot of um, what, you, what you said compatibility mm-hmm. with one another, and that's a lot because their origin story was similar enough as well so there wasn't a lot of um d- differences that, that um that's uh, true so they understood st- stood one another plus they both were educated as educators and yeah. so they're both school teachers, they were school teachers and so that's yeah. uh so so thinking about like your household and the compat- compatibility that that mm-hmm. went on and you had a pretty peaceful functional household it, like um mm-hmm. you yeah. don't remember them f- a lot of fighting or whatever right no, I don't. No, not fighting. Um, there were there were stern discussions, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and and there were disagreements over things, but nothing. Nothing that didn't get talked through and worked mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. Um, and when there were those, like you know, there's it was a small house. There wasn't a lot of places to go, but mm-hmm. uh, definitely, uh, we were relegated to the living room and mm-hmm. to our bedrooms. Um, uh because usually the kitchen began, I don't know what it was with the kitchen, uh-huh. but the kitchen was the 
uh, stern discussion room or whatever. I don't know what you would say, but like um, <laughs> the stern yeah. discussion room. Yeah, and so, but that was where they were, because they each presented, mm-hmm. like probably their side of the mm-hmm. of the argument or their disagreement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Each presented their opinion, and then it worked out. But like never, I never went to bed feeling like my parents were on the brink of a divorce or something. Yeah. You know, because kids, I think kids just, they internalize so much, Mm -hmm. right? And as soon as they hear some arguing or, or shouting or whatever, I never had the shouting there. I definitely knew that there was a disagreement. Something of magnitude was going on, Mm -hmm. but it was resolved. Mm Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there was there was peace and there was um, security in that. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Yeah, so um, uh, probably the, uh, the the benefit of of us both sharing our origin stories here is that you, that I think probably there are folks um, some of our our one other couples out there will be able to relate to either your upbringing mm-hmm. or or mine. And so yep. mine was mine was pretty dysfunctional. Uh, oh, I re- I remember my parents. My parents, though, I think were married twenty seven years. Mm, yeah, they were married. Many. They didn't. 20. They weren't divorced. They were divorced eventually, and it wasn't until I was in my twenties. So. Well, we were. You were twenty uh, f- five. Yeah, so I think 20, 25. So maybe 28 years or something. But they were married uh, multiple years. But much, my memory is much of their marriage was, was, um, what was in conflict. Mm-hmm. There was, there was a struggle and there was a difference in my parents' personalities. And, um, mm-hmm. and so it was a lot of, um, a, a lot of conflict growing up and a lot of dysfunction, um, struggles in, in the household. Yeah. And so, um, my memories, although there were, there are some, you know, pockets of happy memories. It's not like it was miserable constantly because I know some folks have just a lot of, lot of uh, abuse one way or right. another. And there wasn't right. that, uh, physical or sexual abuse going on. It was, um, but the dysfunction was, was strong and very real. Um, but there are pockets of, you know, playing games together or, um, a, a few trips or vacations that I remember. And, mm-hmm. um, of course there was the influence, which you had this as well. Um, t- the influence of being at grandparents house, which mm-hmm. kind of offered a bit of a balance and well, to, one set of your grandparents. Yeah. One set of grandparents and which offered a little bit of a balance to some of the struggle uh, growing up in that household. Offered balance. Are you saying that that also offered some perspective? for yeah that parent of yours as you saw yeah which is interesting that family of origin where they came from to maybe like go okay mm-hmm. <laughs> i could yeah, see how is. there's some impact here it is interesting to consider like the marriage of my grandparents mm-hmm. on my mom's side right and what at least what i observed we as children though it's so difficult to capture sure fully and it is a child's perspective and yep. and growing up and so what I saw from my my grandparents um, on my mom's side, their their marriage uh, seemed to be. I mean, they were married over fifty years, and it was um, s- seemed to be uh, happy. They they connected well. They laughed together. They they had friends and played games, played a lot of cards, you know, so forth mm-hmm. and so on. And so there was that. So that that balance of seeing a, a marriage uh, intact long term, mm-hmm. right? So my dad remarried, and so, but as an adult, I wasn't able to observe that. Right, we were t- tremendous. Me, we were out. St- st- I mean, we already old, had. Yeah, we already had Alex. Well, we had uh, Taylor too. Mm-hmm. We had Alex and Taylor, and then your dad remarried. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we were already out, established, yeah. and yeah, and we actually lived a distance away at that mm-hmm. time. Yeah. So I have to say this is that before just the fuller answer for me is I do have distinct memories of my parents connecting one to one another in in it, there was peace right and whether i saw him smooch in the kitchen or you know having this conversation but i do have moments where there was like you shared that was not present in your house where there was uh, some 
a lot of shouting and fighting mm-hmm. and um, laying it where I've been laying in bed and hearing the yelling downstairs right. kind of thing. So, right. um, so yeah, so that some of that dysfunction from right. the family of origin. So we we can really relate to we together can relate to what functional and dysfunctional looks like mm-hmm. and how that impacts how that impacts marriage and how it impacts um going forward now for me there was a conscious choice in saying okay i looked at my parents marriage and i said i i know that's not what i want is and so it's and trying to make a conscious effort at making things different and that's part of the larger story right um and for you did you did you look at your parents and think hey you know, did you think about what kind of marriage you wanted going forward? Did, did that cross your mind? Well, sure. I wanted to have a, a happy marriage. And a, um, uh, I did have, I mean, within my parents' um, families of origin, I had some aunts and uncles who had experienced divorce. And so I had seen that. I knew what that looked like mm-hmm. as a kid and as growing up and watching those cousins affected by that and different things. So I definitely knew I wanted a happy marriage. I mean, I also knew that um, because because I'm a, I'm a Christian, I wanted to marry a man who was also a Christian because I knew that that would not be, um, th- that wouldn't produce um, mm-hmm. good fruit either. I had seen that happen within my church home um, where one spouse was, one spouse wasn't, and mm-hmm. that never seemed to always jive on all levels. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, d- I definitely, yeah, I had, I had ambitions of, of having a long-lasting, healthy marriage. Mm-hmm. I yeah. feel like I'm on the path. <laughs> what do you think? I think, I think, think so we're on the path. So far, so good. Okay, all right, good. So far, so good. Yeah, I think, I think you're going to make it, kid. <laughs> so. Uh, well, what we want to encourage folks out there as we walk through this topic is those questions that we just asked one another, we would encourage you to discuss with one, if you sure. have not already, and that is ask about and get to know family of origin. And pr- you may have done this already if you have been married f- for a while or for any amount of time, but if you're listening to this and you're dating or you are um, not married yet, or you're newly married, or you, you truly don't know much about it, no matter how long you've been together. If mm-hmm. you don't know a whole lot about your partner's family of origin, you better get with it. Yeah, it's a, and these are great this questions. Impact, this impacts everything. Like we said, fooey. Mm-hmm. It does. <laughs> and so the encouragement is, is to ask the questions of what do you remember about you, the marriage of your parents? Another couple things that that we would encourage is uh, it, or is to create a, a good tool is to create a family tree or a genogram. And this is something, of course, we don't have a tremendous amount of time to unpack here, but a genogram it, or a family tree is, a, is, a, is like um, laying out on even a piece of paper, like p- put yourself and your spouse and then you're going to draw lines up to your parents and put their relationship. And then your children put their relationship with you. And then you're drawing out, basically draw out your family tree up to your grandparents and rate all those relationships and even put a coding system for like, okay, this was a good relationship. This was, there was either addiction or abuse or this was happy or there was laughter or whatever. So you would, you would include if there was a spiritual background, or was there faith present. And so you would, you would basically fill in and evaluate and look at and your your entire family tree or your family relationship. An entire family tree meaning that you're not going back like like ten generations right. kind of thing. You're you're basically going back to We're grand- not ancestry dot com here. That's right. We're not. Okay. So you're going to like grandparents, your parents, yeah. yourself, your children if you have them. Yeah. And then what you do is you lay that out and then turn to your spouse. Both of you have done this. And turn to your spouse and walk through and talk about some of that history. And 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 the idea with this tool is to really um, look under with a microscope, do a deep dive, to kind of have a deeper understanding and then also help your partner mm-hmm. to have a deeper understanding of your family 
background. And it's a powerful, powerful tool. What it'll reveal are some important things about family of origin and how it impacts everything within your right. present relationship. But there are some key questions that have to be asked coming out of this, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And just a little plug as well, um, we do have a YouTube video on the Genogram. Yeah, go to the So YouTubes. you could go to our YouTube video, watch that. You can also just Google Genogram. A lot of things will pop up if you're just kind of like, hey, I, I'm more of a visual person. I need to see it. So yeah, that's yeah. a great way. Okay. That's a good, I, um, that's a very good suggestion. Go, go to our other go to our resources, other resources and you can unpack this a little bit more. And actually we model it for you there. Yep, we do. We put ours on the, on the big post-it notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, so as for some other questions, like you just said, um, we always, when we're coaching our couples, we also talk about family of origin because uh, when couples come in and they're really like, well, you know, this is a struggle or, or this, you know, I really enjoy this. A lot of times when we get to that part of the assessment, it's usually um, something to do with a family of origin um, mm-hmm. response, right? Because, because we, we just, that's who influences us. I mean, think about it, folks. That's, that is your primary influence for almost 17, 18 years, right? And then you launch out usually. Um, sometimes a little bit longer, whatever. Um, but one key question is what from your family of origin would you like to repeat? So those are those positive things that come along, right? And so when you have couples coming in together, we're talking, you know, like, um, making sure that you've, you've discussed how you celebrated, um, holidays, how you celebrated birthdays, or if you did, I mean, what if, what if you didn't? That's okay. Mm-hmm. Or what if it was just very minimal? But what if you marry someone who their family of origin, birthdays were like a really big deal. And then now you guys are married and you don't quite um, hit the nail on the head as your spouse is like, that's it, you know, or whatever. And you're like, what? <laughs> I got, we got a card and we got, we're having a treat or a dessert, you know, but it's, it, so Families of origin can have a positive impact on, you know, celebratory things and stuff like that. But you got to mm-hmm. communicate about if that's something you want to repeat. It was a very real couple situation where the wife was an only child um, within her family. And birthdays every year were like, uh, as the husband well, said, obviously, <laughs> as, the, as the husband said, they were a national holiday <laughs> for birthdays. And then the husband he he came from a blended family mm-hmm. of uh, five children, mm-hmm. and he was the middle child. Right. And when asked, he said, "Well, birth- we, uh, the question was, uh, how were birthdays celebrated in your house?" <laughs> and he said, "Well, they were noted. They were not right." <laughs> and so, so can you, as as Teresa just unpacked <laughs> for us, can you imagine that marriage coming together? Right. And she's so excited about her birthday coming up. Right. And he just kind of gives a card and notes, right. noted uh, thus it. noted, thus hey, noted. your birthday's noted. Right. And then when his birthday, and by the way, she's extroverted, he's introverted. Right. So she's, that a, into it. she's an extroverted <laughs> only child who wants her birthday celebrated <laughs> big time. And then he is a middle child of a blended family <laughs> who's introverted. And, and was fine with just the noting. And we're just <laughs> to, and then all of a sudden she throws this big surprise party right. for him. And he's like... I hate this. I hate, right. And What's so, going on? It's so yeah. family of origin impacts everything. Right. So these are important things to right. discuss. So like, you know, another positive, um, family meals. Did those occur? Did, did your family, um, did you eat your dinners in front of the TV? Was there mm. conversation? Were you specifically at the table? You know, so now you're married. It's the two of you. How do, how are you handling that as well? Um, and then, you know, throwing kids now, how you, ha- how are you handling it as well? So, mm-hmm. so family meal time in my house, we had dinner together. I mean, like that's what we didn't have a TV in the kitchen. We, the TV mm-hmm. wasn't on, the radio wasn't on. We sat down, we talked, we mm-hmm. talked about our day. We, we shared a meal together and then there was, there was cleanup afterwards. And that was a consistent, mm-hmm. um, item in my house. And we were a TV tray. 
Yeah. You were. <laughs> uh, family, when we did have meals together. Right. I remember early on we had some together. Right. But then as we as we were getting older, like elementary school into junior high especially, yeah, it was right. sitting in front of the TV watching whatever. Yeah. The funny thing is, is that now that we are empty nesters, we don't sit at the table quite as much. Mm-hmm. We will... But sometimes we do just look at each other and it's like, you know, yeah, you want to go wash something while we eat or whatever. Yeah. And we'll do that from time to time. But um, th- it's just kind of odd because mm-hmm. when the kids were here, as long as the kids were here. Now, unless it was like a special mm-hmm. show, something that we all did together as a family mm-hmm. or if it was like, you know, Saturday night movie night or Friday night movie night and, you know, we splurged and got pizza then the object was to watch that eating together in front of the TV, right? And I feel like for us now, it really is a, like, um, we we need to veg. We do. Because we've, <laughs> we've been going at it pretty hard right. all day with uh, and it uh, whatever we have going. Time to, and it, yeah. it, we veg eating dinner. But then we usually, when we're done watching at dinner, we... Turn it off, and we're and we're not watching anything for the yeah, rest of the evening because right. we've moved on to something else. Right, uh, being active. Yeah, but I think part of it too is you and I, we have a hard time sitting. Uh, yeah, still for long. For long, and so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so here's another one that's a positive of what do you wish to repeat, and um, this one kind of hit me when I had heard it, um, the first time was, um, our products and purchases, right? Hmm. So yeah. we are heavily influenced we don't even realize it but you know like when we got married there were certain products laundry detergent or maybe even like the make a model of a car that you Mm. would purchase families have usually set products that Mm -hmm. they get involved in right or or possibly you know i don't know maybe your family grew up and and you actually you know they dabbled in the stock market and there were stocks and investments, you know, like certain traits like that can be passed on that are positive. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So can you think of like a product or a, or purchases that you've seen yourself making over the years that really do relate back to your family of origin? Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know maybe cause I didn't pay attention, but I, I think the, the, I think for me, it came less the products purchased and mm-hmm. more of like, which I think this connects, and that is um, eating, like foods that you choose. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. like for instance, there were certain menu items that that you grow up in a household and you're used to, and then when you join together, you're kind of like, where's that item now? Where's, where's that, that, <laughs> where's that yeah. thing that I'm used to? And I remember one of our points, I've got, this is a funny story, uh, for well, funny now, but when we were well, first it's hilarious married, now, hilarious <laughs> now. When we were first married, I remember we had um, a disagreement. Um, we had a problem with one another <laughs> because I was so excited about a recipe, and um, I forget how it goes exactly. All I know is it was painful, um, and that <laughs> is so. Bit. I went to call my grandmother yes. to get the recipe, yeah. and you, your feelings were hurt. Right. Yeah, because what's your recollection? I, I don't of that? know. I really don't know, but I think we're going off of the no, thing here. No, but that's here. A, from a family of it origin. It is from a family of origin. Because my family of origin was I wanted chocolate chip. That was chocolate chip okay. cookies. I think. I don't know. What I it love was. chocolate chip cookies, and I yeah. wanted them the way my grandmother made them. Right. And I wasn't against you calling your grandmother for that. No, there was a recipe that I had made. I think it was. It wasn't chocolate chip cookies. I feel like it was something like macaroni salad or something. Oh. It was kind of weird. It was, a, and I think it was based upon the mayonnaise. Oh. And, and you wanted to call your grandmother to get her specific, her specific, what she would do or what she would use. Yeah. And I felt like it was a, it was going to become a comparison. Like mm. mine wasn't going to be good enough. Why would you need to call your grandma? And your grandma doesn't need to know mm-hmm. that I'm using this kind, right? <laughs> Which then also <laughs> goes back to family of origin. Because right. my See? family of origin, Miracle Whip. Uh, mayonnaise. But my my mom hates mayonnaise now, as exactly. always. But we had it in the but house. there are other people that it was Hellman's. Yes, Hellman's. And there was a I distinct think we were a Hellman's family. difference. 
Yeah. And I believe that was what it really boiled down to was <laughs> your your distinct <laughs> difference of what you felt was an appropriate that, choice. That is a fabulous Family, family of origin, origin. <laughs> story. That's a fooey story so right there. So what are some of those? Okay, so um, because we need to get going here, what um, next question would be, what would you want to discontinue? Mm. So we want you to think about what do you want to continue? Positives, right? Mm-hmm. What do you want to discontinue? What are those negative things that come from family of origin? Now, some of these can be an obvious one, like David already alluded to earlier, like uh, abuse or addictions, mm-hmm. Um what about tempers, mm-hmm. you know, um, shouting matches, um, there could be, um, just, just disconnect. Mm-hmm. What about that? Right? Like, what about, what about parents who really just aren't involved, you yeah. know, and what if you, yeah. as a child, you're growing up in that and you remember that, right? And it's like, but you have a friend who their parents seem to be involved with them and everything mm-hmm. or, or show an interest, Take mm-hmm. an interest, right? So what are some of those things that you want to discontinue? And I feel like mm-hmm. that's what you did a good job of is yeah. you hit a certain age and you were you turned your path, you made an about face yeah, and made um, a clear direction that you wanted to go as a husband and as a father. Mm-hmm. And you've done that. You've You've done a great job at that. I was just talking to an individual today. They just asked, hey, so what are you doing with your rest of your day? And Mm -hmm. uh, I said, well, my wife and I do marriage work and we're going to do, we're going to record our podcast today. And Mm -hmm. and I explained family of origin and she perked right up and she said, I tell you what, that's absolutely right. I've been married 22 years, she said, and my husband and I have a great relationship, but both of us would not want to repeat anything from our original families. Mm. And we made a conscious choice Mm -hmm. to be different. And I loved hearing that. And that's, that's be my story as well. Right. I I really wanted a different marriage, a different parenting style than what I had and growing up and that conscious effort. So I, I love those questions and that's what we really want. If there's anything you take away from this podcast, it's going to be the two questions that Teresa threw out there the two primary questions would, what do you wish to repeat and what do you want to discontinue from your family of origin? And then what you just led into there about, you know, if you do have children, you are, you are influencing their family as well of future family. So dad mm-hmm. step up, mom step up. That's right. And so I'm telling you what, I, if there's anything, and this is, this is an appropriate kind of ending and exclamation point for for me for this podcast and that's encouragement if if uh, i tell you what uh friends you step up as a mom and a dad in your marriage mm-hmm. do something to make your marriage as healthy as possible if you're struggling in your marriage work at your marriage it is worth it it mm-hmm. is worth it and and push you and here's the thing marriage is not easy no. at all times it is there are, it has its challenges and it's embrace the challenges embrace the fact that it's gonna be a challenge but get 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 better do mm-hmm. do what you can a uh, question that to to ask in this case would be what kind of marriage do you want your children to have mm-hmm. and that's the kind of marriage you want to model for them now and how do you want your children to answer those questions when they are that's right that's out of the house let's say your children are listening to this podcast or one like it right um in years from now years from now what do you want them going through their mind of like okay you know what this is what i want to repeat and this is what i don't want to repeat and so set that example uh now and we know you can do it we know you can do it so that leads us to The verse of the week. This is how we kind of want to wrap up every week is give a verse for the week. And Teresa, you have one for us? I do. I do. So it is out of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Mm. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another 
and all the more as you see the day approaching. What an appropriate verse for today Mm -hmm. and setting that example. We really appreciate you joining us this week, and we want to encourage you. uh, First, subscribe to the podcast, whatever platform that you're using, and uh, we ask that you will rate the podcast Mm -hmm. and review it, write a review. You know, especially iTunes really loves that. It helps it move move it up in the searches, Mm -hmm. and we really, once again, we say this over and over again, it's not about making uh, David and Teresa famous. It's about helping helping as many couples as possible, mm-hmm. strengthening marriage so they can have greater satisfaction, greater fulfillment, and right. impact on the world around them. So you can also connect with us through our website at oneanothermarriage.com. You can find us at YouTube at One Another Marriage and Facebook One Another Marriage there as well. We go live every every Thursday night at mm-hmm. eight o'clock on Facebook Live if you want to see our beautiful faces and not just <laughs> hear our beautiful voices. Right. And so we want to invite you to participate with us and share with others. Right. All right. Well hey, thank you so much for joining us. And the next time you join us, we will be talking about stress, and we will specifically talk about our stress animals. Stress is present in every relationship, and that's that's what we're going to unpack next week. Thank you for joining us. Bye now. Bye.